Okay, guys, this is part two, and this is uh, where we left off on enzymes are highly specific catalysts. So concept 8.4, enzymes speed up metabolic reactions by lowering the energy barriers, or in other words, lowering the activation energy. A catalyst, as a review, is a chemical agent that speeds up a reaction without being consumed by the reaction, which means that enzymes are reusable. An enzyme is a catalytic protein. And hydrolysis of sucrose by the enzyme sucrase is an example of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction. So in this case, we have the disaccharide sucrose, which is um, being broken down through the use of a water molecule as well as sucrase, the enzyme, into two monosaccharides, glucose and fructose. Okay, so enzymes speed up reactions by lowering the activation energy, and we will go into more detail about how the enzymes lower the activation energy later on in this lecture. Um, and enzymes don't change the delta G, or don't change the free energy of the, of the reaction. Okay, another characteristic about enzymes, they are substrate specific. So as a reminder, a substrate is like a ligand, so it's a reactant which binds to an enzyme. When the substrate or substrates bind to the enzyme, the enzyme will catalyze the conversion of the substrate into a product. So, and again, into this example of breaking down the disaccharide sucrose using the help of a water molecule and our enzyme sucrase, um, the enzyme will bind to sucrose um, and then help break it down into glucose and fructose. Okay. Uh, the active site of an enzyme is typically a oh shoot sorry about that the active site of an enzyme is typically a pocket or groove on the surface of the protein into which the substrate fix so in this picture our little red group of molecules here that's our substrate and then the blue big blob is our enzyme and then right in here this empty space is the active site so the specificity of an enzyme is due to the fit between the active site and that of the substrate. We call it an induced fit. So as the substrate binds, the enzyme changes shape, leading to a tighter induced fit, bringing the chemical groups in position to catalyze the reaction. And then another characteristic, uh, the active site is an enzyme's, did it again, is an enzyme's catalytic center. So in most cases, the substrates are held in the active site by the weak interactions, and these weak interactions is what I refer to in um, the enzymes part one video. So those can be anything like hydrogen bonds, electrostatic attractions, Van der Waals forces, um, things like that. And the R groups of just a few of the amino acids on the active site are the ones that will actually catalyze the conversion of the substrate into the product. And again, these are the, the big ideas PowerPoint slides. Um, so I'm just kind of reviewing the general information with you first before we get a little bit deeper into um, the characteristics of enzymes. So this is a figure from your textbook that talks about the active site and the catalytic cycle of the enzyme. So just to kind of go over the figure, um, first we have the substrates that will enter the active site and then the enzyme will change shape conformational shape such that its active site will enfold the substrate and that's what we call the induced fit. Then from there the substrates are held in the active site by all of the different weak interactions. So those can be the hydrogen bonds, the Van der Waals forces, um, ionic bonds, things like that. And then the active site will lower the activation energy and actually speed up the chemical reaction. And again, we'll go into more in depth about how in a little bit. And then substrates are converted into the products and then those products are released. And then finally, the active site is available for two new substrate molecules. Okay, so characteristics of enzymes in general. Let's get all of these in here. There we go. Okay, uh, the first thing is that enzymes are unaffected by the reaction, so they are reusable. So one single enzyme can actually be used over and over and over and over again, and it can catalyze multiple reactions. The second thing is that enzymes are extremely specific, so they will only bind to one substrate or a couple of substrates, but they're very specific to what they bind to. The third characteristic is that they don't change the reaction equilibrium. 
Um, so in the earlier video, when I brought to you uh, the idea behind the equilibrium constant, we're going to revisit that again. And it's actually um, a particular concept called enzyme kinetics, and we'll go over that. And then number four, metabolic enzymes can catalyze a reaction in both the forward and reverse directions, so they are reversible reactions. And the actual direction depends on the concentrations of the products and the concentrations of the reactions, uh, reactions, reactants. Um, and then enzymes will catalyze reactions in the direction of equilibrium. So this table is just a table of some different uh, common types of enzymes that you'll see. And do you have to memorize all of these? No, but the more that you know them and the more that you're familiar with what a particular type of enzyme or family of enzymes does, what their function is, um, the more likely you are to really understand you know, everything else moving forward in biology. So the first thing to know here is that you'll see on the column of enzymes, you see all these different enzymes and they all end with ACE. Right? We have hydrolase, we have nuclease, we have protease, we have synthase, you know, we have all these different aces. And that's very characteristic of an enzyme. So anytime you see an enzyme with uh, an ace as the suffix, I mean, anytime you see a word um, with an ace as a suffix, then you can automatically think, okay, that must be an enzyme. The only enzyme that we will really talk about this year um, that doesn't have the ace as a suffix is rubisco. And we'll get into that when we, when we talk about metabolism later on. But everything else, again, if you see an ace, it's a good chance that it's, that it's an enzyme. The other thing with enzymes is that they're normally named after the type of reaction that they catalyze. So for example, um, a protease, okay? The ace is the enzyme, and then the prote, the prote or the P-R-O-T-E part, the prefix of that, tells you that the enzyme, um, its function is to break down proteins, okay? Same thing with ATP aces, so anything with the ATP, like ATP synthase, its function is to synthesize ATP. Um, okay, so here we go, enzyme substrate binding. So we have this concept of enzyme kinetics. And with enzyme kinetics, um, First thing to remember is for a protein that catalyzes a chemical reaction, so for example an enzyme, the binding of each substrate molecule to the protein is essential. So in the simplest case, okay, if we denote the enzyme by E and we denote the substrate by S and the product by P, then we can have or we can represent the basic reaction pathway as enzyme plus substrate gets us the enzyme substrate complex, which can then turn into the enzyme product complex, which then breaks up into enzyme and product. So in the sense of how we can... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? In the sense of how we can describe enzyme kinetics, this would be our basic enzymatic reaction pathway. E plus S yields ES, yields EP, which yields E plus P. So from this reaction path, we can see that there's a limit to the amount of substrate that a single enzyme molecule convert, can convert into product at any given time. So an increase in, in the concentration of the substrate will increase the rate at which the product is formed up to a maximum value. And so at this point, the enzyme is what we call saturated with substrate. And then the rate of reaction, which we, which we denote as Vmax, V standing for velocity, depends on how fast the enzyme can actually convert the substrate into product. So therefore, an enzyme's Vmax divided by the concentration of the enzyme will give us its turnover number. And the turnover number is what we refer to as, okay, how fast can the enzyme actually convert the substrate into product? And that's what we call turnover number. So the turnover number is usually about 1,000 substrates processed per second. Of course, that varies per enzyme. But if you think about it, 1,000 substrates being turned over or processed per second, that's huge, right? That's extremely fast. Um, we can also use, along with Vmax, we can also use something called Km, 
to determine the efficiency of the enzyme as well. What is Km? So Km is um, the concentration of the substrate that will allow the reaction to proceed at half of its Vmax. Okay, so a low Km means that the enzyme reaches its, its Vmax at a very low concentration of substrate. And so therefore, that would um, indicate that the enzyme can bind to the sub substrate very, very tightly. Okay, and then of course, vice versa would happen for a high Km. So in this graph, this is actually um, a common, what you would see, rate of reaction graph, or I got ahead of myself, a rate of reaction over substrate concentration graph. Okay, so right here we have the rate of reaction, and then here we're measuring the substrate concentration. And in this graph, um, the rate of reaction is, is denoted as VI, or the initial velocity, and then the substrate concentration in moles, and then right here is the Vmax, the maximum velocity, so the highest rate of reaction that the enzyme um, can convert the substrate into product. And then the Km measurement here is the substrate concentration at which um, the, the rate of reaction is half of the Vmax. Okay, so anyway, why in this whole concept, it's very, very complex and, you know, we're not going to, we're just touching on the basics of it here and you'll go a lot more in depth with it in college and, you know, do practice problems and things like that, but um, that's beyond the scope of AP, but I bring it to your attention because, you know, why do we use enzyme kinetics to actually analyze enzymes. Um, and the reason is because it by doing this, we can actually figure out how exactly the enzyme works. And if we can understand the exact mechanism of the enzyme, how quickly it works, and what's its turnover number and things like that, if we can actually understand that, then we can do a lot of things. Um, so we can discover new de delivery drugs, we can just discover more about the cells in general. And so knowing how the enzyme rates um, change in different conditions as well can also help us figure out uh, where we can go from, from here. So for example, different conditions could be you know, the, the concentration of the substrate, it could be the concentration of the product, it could be the presence of inhibitors, um, it could be a pH change, a temperature change, an ionic concentration change, you know, whatever. Okay, so enzymes speed the reactions by selectively stabilizing the transition stakes. Um, so in the earlier slide, it said, you know, we talked about how enzymes work by lowering the activation energy. And then I told you that we would talk a little bit more specifically about how. So, and as you saw earlier, enzymes are extremely fast, right? And they achieve these extremely high rates of reactions in a few different ways. One way is that the enzyme increases the local, meaning around itself, um, substrate concentration at the actual catalytic site. And it will work to um, a couple of the R groups within the active site actually hold the atoms of the substrate of interest in the correct orientation in the active site for the reaction to actually follow. Um, another way is that some of the binding energy will actually contribute directly to the catalysis. So substrate molecules typically pass through many different intermediate stages between, or between, before they finally get converted into product. And then the free energy required to attain the, the transition state of the substrate molecule is called the activation energy. And the activation energy is what actually determines the reaction rate. So enzymes have a much higher affinity for the, the substrate molecule when it's in the transition state. Um, than it does for the stable form, okay? So it prefers the unstable transition state. So this, it will bind very tightly to the transition state of the substrate. And so the tight binding to the substrate in its transition state uh, will actually lower the activation energy needed and then thus speed up the chemical reaction. So then here's a, a graph explaining that, you know, the energy over the reaction or the, the reaction um, coordinate. And you can just see that um, the 
time it takes to convert the carbon dioxide and water into bicarbonate. Um, without the enzyme, you know, you have a really high amount of activation energy, but with the enzyme, it's much lower.